Today is the start of a new project of mine where I'm going to be turning half of my family bathroom into a walk-in wardrobe. I'll give you all the details in a future video. But in this video, the important job is to take away and cap off the water supply. other than lift it up and see. As a part of this project and to get to the pipes I want to cap off, I need to firstly remove the standalone bath, which is a type that I've never worked on before and I don't really know at this stage how it's secured to the floor, if at all, and how it fits in with a P-trap or U-bend. As it is, it's actually semi-stuck to the floor with some big blobs of silicone which I release by sawing through them with a jack saw because that's the only thing that I've got long enough that can actually fit through such a small gap. All this footage is from an additional weekly video I produce for my Patreon members. So if you want to see more of what happens behind the scenes at Proper DIY and see extra length weekly videos with extra content that the public don't get to see, please go and have a look at my Patreon page and sign up. Link is in the description below. Maybe the best thing to do is just to take it away from the outlet, if I can get my arm in, which I can't. I managed to disconnect the flexible to the P-trap that's on the uh, bath there. So now that should be fully disconnected. Absolutely no sign of water at all. It's probably just dried up because we tend not to use it. Okay, let's see if I can uh, rip this out. <laughs> After a certain amount of messing about, I managed to remove the bath so I can now get to the freestanding hot and cold taps. At this point, however, I was still blissfully unaware that unusually the skirting board had been fixed after the tap set was installed. So at this very first stage, I was faced with a mini challenge. So to take this hot and cold away, I need to take off this plate to be able to get to the screws underneath, which are actually bolting it to the floor. But it looks to me like this has gone in first, and then someone has actually cut the skirting around it to make it fit. So now I can't take the base plate off without taking away the skirting. So that's the first little challenge. And if I wasn't selling the bath and this set of mixer taps. I might just cut that base plate off, but I'm going to really need that to sell it. So I think the only thing I can do is take off the skirting. As there's a convenient joint in the skirting, just near the taps to the right hand side, I tried removing the whole length to the left hand wall, but it's so well glued on that at this moment it's easier just to cut the section out and get on with the job. I'll reinstate all of this at the end of the project as I've got plenty of other additional skirting that I'll need to fix. With the skirting removed, I can pull the capping plate up and out the way and remove the screws holding the taps in place. This type of tap set comes with quite a generous flexible pipe setup, which helps lay it down and move it out the way. I can then close the isolation valves, although I'm surprised to see copper pipe beyond them. Now I must admit, I thought that I'd end up capping off on plastic because I know that under the floorboards in this house most of the pipework is sort of fle flexible plastic. However, to get down to the plastic pipe there I'm going to end up taking out more of the floor, taking out these uh, tiles, taking out some chipboard which I don't really want to do at the moment. So I'm going to take the opportunity because of this six inches of copper pipe to actually cap off on the copper and then just push them underneath the finished floor level so they disappear forever. And as it is, the fittings I'm going to be using to cap this off 
work on both copper pipe and plastic pipe, so it doesn't really make any difference to me. So go and see Stuart in the garage, who will explain to you all about the fittings I'm going to use. So just like any other plumbing around the house, I've got a choice today of different types of fittings and systems that I can use on this end stop, especially as I'm putting it onto copper pipe. Now the first one, and I would say the most permanent, is to solder on an end cap. This one is what they call a Yorkshire fitting. That means the fitting has solder already added inside, waiting for you to heat it up, which means that you only need to prepare the pipe, add some flux, and then heat it up until you see the silver ring of solder appear all the way around the fitting. This is a really permanent way of putting on an M-stop. However, you do need a blowtorch and a soldering mat to do it safely. And in a really tight space like I've got here, where there's plenty of combustible material around as well, it's not necessarily either a simple or safe job. A little bit more of a DIY solution are compression fittings. And you can actually buy an end cap to fit in to a standard compression fitting to make an end stop using either a new connector you put on the pipe or one that's already in place. Just like any compression fitting, the pipe has got to be prepared first. The pipe has got to go all the way into the fitting using a nice clean olive. And it needs to be tightened up well so it doesn't leak. These work pretty well, but once again, in a confined space like I've got, to be able to tighten up both ends of a compression fitting is going to be tricky to say the least. The last option, which is the easiest and the one I'm going to use today, is the push-on plastic fitting. Now these have been around for some time, but for many years after they came out, I was still using compression and soldered fittings because I thought these were just going to push off under the pressure. But they don't, and I'm now converted. If you're going to do a small job at home, look into using plastic pipe and plastic fittings, although these fittings also work on copper as well. There's different makes and different types around, but they all work. This one just happens to be a speed fit, which is a fairly classic make. I'll put a link in the description to where you can find these and the costs and the different types and what have you. And they're as easy as this. You prepare your copper pipe, just making sure it's smooth. And with a cap and stop end like this, you just push it on. That is now done and that will now stand mains pressure would you believe. If at some point in the future you also want to take it off, you just hold this collar, it also slips off. So you can probably see why I thought for many years that these wouldn't stand up to mains pressure. So how do they actually grip themselves on and how much force can I put on one of these until they fail? So this is the plastic push on stop end and it's made out of a couple of pieces. The main piece here of the body is all in one section. It's got a couple of gaskets in there to create a nice seal around your plastic or copper pipe. But there's also this wobbly sort of piece of plastic sticking out. And this is a bit that actually does the job. And if you pull it, you can actually take it out. And let me see if I can show you with a bit of a close up. So the thing that really does the work is these little metal, I would call them knives, that stick out around the perimeter and they actually dig in to the pipe, whether it's plastic or copper, enough to stop it pulling out when it's under pressure. So let's just do a really quick unscientific test just to see how much force these can hold. So what I've set up here is a short piece of 15mm copper pipe into two speed fit fittings, these are T's, just so I can put a clamp on one side and then I can put another clamp on this side. These clamps are obviously opening outwards. Just tighten that up and tighten that up. Now, I'm just gonna see how much force I can put on them until this whole thing pops apart. Now, as I said, this isn't scientific. I don't know how many kilograms or whatever I'm pushing into this, but I think I'll be able to tell just by the force I'm putting on these clamps, eh? Okay, here goes. Just even these up. That's okay. That is putting quite a bit of pressure on now. I mean, if these clamps were being used on a bit of timber, that would be creaking and pushing it apart. Eey. That is getting quite 
I can almost not put much pressure on, especially with my left hand. Crikey. Well, I've sort of got to the limit. <coughs> I can't. I can't put any more pressure on that. In fact, my clamp, I think, is going to break. Ah. Whoops. <laughs> I was right. Okay, so that's fairly conclusive. And the answer is, I don't know how many kilograms ow, I put on that. But let's just say that that is stronger than my clamp. To fit the stop ends, I turn off the water at the main incoming stopcock, then drain the hot and cold system on the ground floor so I know that the upstairs pipes are now free of water. And then I can undo the ends of the flexible pipes. And before I completely take off the isolation valve, I just double check that I don't have any water pressure in the system by slightly opening it and just proving to myself there's nothing there. I also tie some string around the pipe just in case it falls down into the void which would make it difficult to retrieve at this point with such a small opening. I do exactly the same with the hot pipe and then remove the isolation valve so I can cut the existing copper pipe as high as possible to leave as much as possible for the end cap to fit onto. If you're doing any plumbing at home, I would highly recommend buying a rotary cutter like this if you're using copper pipe. Link is in the description below. Or ratcheting pipe shears for plastic pipe. They not only make cutting easier, but they leave a nice, clean, burr-free edge. So after a quick clean and some steel wool, I'm ready to fit the stop end. So that's pretty much on and all there is to it. So there's nothing else for me to do other than to put the water back on and then just test for leaks. So oh, that's really nice and dry and that's all there is to it. Just pop them on and they work. As long as you can get your head around the fact they're not going to suddenly pop off, which I think I've just demonstrated, although I am now one clamp down, which is slightly annoying. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe, hit the bell notification, have a look at my Patreon page and I will see you next time.